Hi guys and welcome to another video. First of all, I, I know this one's been a long time coming. Um, for all those who requested it in the comments, I do apologise. I've just been really busy with work lately. Um, anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Today we are looking at the Smiths PRS25 Everest Expedition from Time Factors. The watch is a recreation of the uh, Smiths A454. Uh, which is the watch that Vivian Fuchs and Sir Edmund Hillary um, took to the South Pole in 1958. Nowadays, uh, an original A454 will set you back big money. So if you like the look and you are happy with a modern take on a classic watch, the PRS25 might be for you. I've spoken about Smith's um, history and time factors in other videos, which I will link below. So if you're interested, Please have a watch of those. Um, I just don't want to re repeat myself in every video. So suffice to say, if you're watching this, uh, you're probably already aware. Uh, so what we have here is a 36 millimeter stainless steel watch. It is 11.3 millimeters thick, which includes the high domed sapphire crystal. A lug to lug of just 43 and a half mil means this wears exceptionally well. The lugs do curve to meet the wrist as well. Um, uh, and it sits perfectly on my six and a half inch wrist. 36 mil is an easy size to wear. The feeling that the watch is small only lasts for a couple of days. Once you get used to it, it tends to make everything else just feel big. Um, and let's not forget that our grandfathers would have been wearing 33, 34 mil watches. So, for a vintage inspired watch, 36 mil is a great size. Uh, the movement in these is the Miyota 9039, which is essentially a 9015 with a low hand stack and no date complication. So there is no ghost date position here. We do have hacking and hand winding at the first position um, and obviously time setting at the second position. I've been wearing this watch for a few weeks now and have timed it at plus nine seconds a day. So not as accurate as the two ETA powered manual winders I reviewed recently, uh, but I'll take plus nine over minus nine any day. And the timekeeping is good enough. Um, of course, your mileage may vary. I don't know what the power reserve on these is supposed to be, but this one is fine. Um, and by fine, I mean that I take it off at night and it's still running when I put it on again the next day. Um, this is a good thing because one of the few cons I can find with this watch Although perhaps it's unkind to call it a con as it's somewhat unavoidable on an 11mm watch um, is that the crown is rather small and tricky to operate. It functions well and smooth, screws in smoothly um, but it's just a little bit hard to grip being so small. Um, unlike the PRS29 pair that I recently reviewed, the crown is signed um, and finished very nicely. In fact, the finishing on the whole watch is very good. Um, on the case, we have radial brushing on the lugs with a highly polished bezel and case sides. Uh, I don't know if I can do this justice in words, so hopefully the video explains it well enough, but the case finishing here is just really pleasing. Um, it's all nice curves and finishes and it feels quality. The case back is also really nicely polished which is um, something we can't say about the PRS29 pair. Um, and it's nicely engraved with the Smith's logo, model number, serial number, and the water resistance, which is 100 meters. I don't often spend time looking at the case backs of my watches, but this one is really nicely done. Um, strap is also well done. Um, we have solid end links, screw adjustment, and a milled clasp with a single push lock. The lock is rather stiff to open, but I guess that's better than having it fall open too easily. Um, the clasp is signed with the Smith's crown and name. And it has these nicely polished edges, which, which might seem like a small detail, but um, this watch is all about the small details um, and I really appreciate it. 
It is perhaps the only area of the watch that's showing any signs of wear. Um, unavoidable on a clasp, we all get little dinks and scratches, um, but it's there, so I'm showing you. The, the rivet style of bracelet may divide opinion somewhat, but when you're wearing the watch, rather than looking at macro photographs, the rivets don't jump out, um, they're just there. So even if you're not a fan, I wouldn't discount the watch just because of the rivets. Um, and you always have the option of putting it on the included brown leather strap, which is a nice touch and it feels like a good strap. I haven't used this yet, um, but nice to have that option. Unfortunately, at the time of filming, these are showing as out of stock on the Time Factors website. Um, Eddie does get stock back from time to time, so keep an eye on the website if you're looking to pick one up. Auction sites are also an option, um, although you can expect to pay a premium over the £325 list price, which at the time of filming works out to be approximately $410. Right, uh, I think I've accidentally saved the best bit till last. Uh, let's talk about the dial in hand. What we have is a cream dial with black printed and loom filled hour markers. Now the loom on this is not as good as the PRS29A that I re reviewed a few weeks back, um, but it is there and it's C3 Super Luminova, so it does an okay job. It just doesn't last that long, uh, which is no doubt a consequence of the small areas of application. The five lines of text are contained within a dial ring that adds texture and interest to the dial. Just a, another example of the little details that are so pleasing about this watch. Uh, we have the Smith's booby crown underneath the 12 marker focus. Uh, the Smith's logo um, and the word deluxe under that. Above the six, we have Everest Expedition and 24 jewels in red. Uh, the red um, picking out the the red second hand, which is a nice touch again. The hour and minute hands are thermally blued um, and filled with C3 Superluminova. Now, if you've seen my Air Ministry video, you will have seen how the blue on those um, hands just pops off the dial. It's not the same here. It's it's much more subtle. Um, but when the sunlight just catch it right, you, you see that blue. And again, it's just another really nice touch. Um, build quality, fit and finish on this are all excellent. Um, the automatic movement performs well and at a very decent price. So once again, this is going to be another easy recommendation from me. Um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Um, a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. I uh, hope you are all staying safe and I will see you in the next video.